Welcome to the video. So this video, if you've been waiting for a shag haircut, a uh, nice medium length shag haircut, this is the video for you. Super popular uh, as we're looking at October 2018, moving into the fall. Um, this is definitely a nice trend to move your guests into. So if you've got a medium length client out there or if you're watching this and you're not a hairdresser, you're looking for haircut inspiration, this is definitely a video to share to your hairdresser uh, to show them something new for you uh, moving into the fall. Some nice layering uh, creates a lot of movement, a lot of texture. It's a really fun haircut. So to start the haircut off, I go right down center back and then I part the hair over to right behind the ear. So I create a nice horizontal line and that's where I start taking it. So for basically from the occipital bone down is what I'm working on and I'm working on a stationary guide. So I'm bringing everything back to the center and cutting it. Um, which is creating kind of a concave feel. So those of you guys that don't really know concave layering, um, it's a it's a collapsed layer. So um, bringing everything over, and because the head shape curves from the occipital bone in at the nape, what's happening is it's giving it more extreme layering. So it looks like I'm just pulling it straight out from the head, but in reality, the head shape is curving in, so I create more of a scooped effect. So I'm combing the hair over, over directing it to the center back and cutting it there. All right, so now as I move on to the opposite side, stay um, keeping my same body position, um, and but still pushing. Now, so now I'm pushing the hair into the middle. So I take my parting, and you can see I'm standing over, and I push the hair away from me instead of combing that center hair in, because what that does is it takes the guide and pulls it to the new hair instead of pushing the new hair to the guide. Anytime you move the guide from where it lives, um, you're going to end up with an inconsistent guideline, which really um, is going to throw off the entire haircut. So just make sure uh, you're consistent with everything that you do. So when I cut on the right hand side, I was pulling that hair into the center. So when I cut on the left hand side, I'm still pulling the hair to the center. Now look at the, the buildup of weight that you see uh, at the top part and then how it collapses in and really skinnies up the perimeter area. That's what's cool about this shag haircut because we're going to build up a uh, you know, a lot of movement, a lot of structure in the very top part of the head, really working with the curve of the head, but then also collapsing it at the bottom. So now as I start to work up the head shape, now I'm going to really uh, focus on following the head shape. So instead of using the head shape to kind of build out any concave layering, now we're creating convex layers that follow the head shape all the way up to the crown. So combing everything down, bringing everything up and out. So this is now, um, instead of over directing to the center, now I'm bringing everything straight out from the head as well because I want to create more of a balanced effect. So when you over direct something all the way to the center and you keep doing that, um, you get extreme over direction, which then puts a lot of length um, and pushes a lot of weight to the side. So we want to have consistent layering throughout. So it has kind of a balanced textured effect throughout. Now also notice right there, I didn't cut all the way to the end. Like a lot of times we feel as hair cutters that we need to go through and cut every bit of hair. I like disconnection. Disconnection is something that if used correctly can really add a lot of um, density to the haircut. So instead of going through and cutting all the way down the side, I stop and don't cut, and I'll work on that in the dry cut, but I keep that density behind the ear because that's where a lot of times we end up with a hole because we go down and cut. And as the hairline grow, grows, or not grows up, but as the hairline kind of curves up around to the edge of the temple, um, you have less hair that you're working with. So see how I comb it out in a way, and then I still comb everything back and cut my consistent kind of following the head shape uh, round line uh, around there. So you can see all that layering, but you still have the density. I'm going to do the same thing on the sides, right? So I go from the parietal ridge, uh, which is that kind of division point between the top and the bottom. And I section that away because I want to keep that density on the sides, but I go through and I keep continuing those, those layers following the head shape. So keeping the convex layers throughout the top. So notice my over direction on the top of the head is right to the center. So she's probably, she's going to wear this very similar to a center parting. If your guest was going to wear it to a side parting, I would go over top of that parting, if that makes sense. So just make sure your over direction matches the way that they're going to wear the hair. So bringing everything to the center, what that's doing is pushing length 
to the sides, right? So if I were to go and follow the head shape and have a traveling guide, I'd end up with really short layers on the side of the head. I wanna push a little extra length there so that the layers match up more with the head shape. All right, now clip away from the parietal ridge down. What that does is just ensures that I don't cut into that hair. So that helps me out. So again, on top of my fingers, following the head shape. So I comb, I cut. I recomb and I cut and I just follow the head shape, making sure that that curve matches up. So I didn't really mention, but if you guys are wondering, I did get my initial guideline from the back crown area. So from what we previously cut in the section. And then once I get my line established, then I just use that line as my guide, as a stationary guide. And again, using the pushing pulling uh, technique that we used in the back as well. So now I'm pushing the hair away from my body into the guideline and holding it over top the center of the head. So now I let out those clips and you can see that disconnection, how it gets a little bit longer, but the shaggy layers that happen on top. So now I'm using Paul Mitchell Invisible Wear Volume Whip. It's a really light foam. So I'm gonna use that because I wanna have a light kind of, uh, it's called Invisible Wear because it's got more of an invisible hold. So you get the structure from it, but at the same time, it's super light. Uh, using the Paul Mitchell blow dryer also to go back and forth, just working in that style. And then also I'm using a paddle brush. I prefer uh, a paddle brush. This is the Ergo paddle brush that we have on our website. I prefer using that because it has a nice tension to it. I also like the diamond head brush, which is a smaller paddle brush. So you can check that out as well, but I like the tension. Then I go through with the Paul Mitchell Pro Tools uh, smoothing iron and work my way through there. So you can see our line, the round kind of feel to it. Um, now I'm gonna go through and just do a little point cutting on the top of the head to soften uh, any line that we created. So harsh lines are fine, but going in and just kind of breaking them up a little bit and softening them gives it more of a textured appearance, um, which I really like, especially with a shag haircut like this. A little bit of slide cutting, it's a half open, half close. Also, remember, I'm using the Matt Beck scissor. We still have some available, so if you're looking for a brand new scissor, Mizutani manufactured this thing for me. I love it, it's to my specification. I created the whole design, so if you're looking for a scissor, click the link below. Finishing off with the uh, Invisible Wear Paul Mitchell um, Undone Texture Spray. So obviously that fits perfectly for this haircut. Watch all the layers come to life as I start to uh, just spray the hairspray on there. Um, so much texture, so much movement. Really love this uh, cut. It's got a really fun color technique as well that I'm gonna share with you guys later on. Uh, but I hope you guys like this video. Hit me up on social media everything at free salon education if you have any questions about this video we're always there to uh, answer those thank you guys so much for watching see you on the next one